Hello class, this is a video tutorial of some of the problems of chapter 14 uh, from the Fundamentals of Corporate Finance text, third edition by Perino, Kidwell, and Bates. In this video, I'm going to go over the um, questions and problems from page 469. I'm not sure if you have different version, but uh, it's under the section titled Questions and Problems. And specifically, we're going to go over questions 14.1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Okay, let's begin. Question 14.1, cash conversion cycle. Wolfgang's masonry estimates that it takes the company 27 days on average to pay off its suppliers. It also knows that it has day sales inventory in inventory of 64 days and day sales outstanding of 32 days. How does Wolfgang's cash conversion cycle compare with the industry average of 75 days? So let's begin. As always, we want to identify the given. The cash conversion cycle equals uh, day sales outstanding plus day sales in inventory minus days payable outstanding. So what do we have here from the problem? The days payable outstanding, DPO, we have as 27 days. It comes from here. Day sales and inv inventory, DSI, 64 days. That comes from here. And the days sales outstanding, or DSO, equals 32 days. And we're getting that from here. All we need to do now is just find the cash conversion cycle and then compare it to the industry average of 75 days. So it's really not that difficult. So in order to find the firm's cash conversion cycle, we just have to follow the formula. We have day sales outstanding right here, 32 days, day sales in inventory, 64, and then days payable outstanding, 27. So when you do that, you do the 32 plus 64 minus 27 days, you get 69 days as the firm's cash conversion cycle. And we can confirm that with the back of the book. Let's see. And it's correct. It's 69 days. Um, so this particular firm, Wolfgang's Masonry, has a shorter cash conversion cycle than the industry average. That's all. So that was pretty simple. So now let's move on to 14.3. Cash conversion cycle, another one. Uh, Devon Automotive estimates that it takes the company about 62 days to collect cash from its customers on finished goods from the day it receives new raw, mater raw materials. And it takes about 65 days to pay its suppliers. What is the company's cash conversion cycle? And then interpret your answer. So this is really a two-part question. Okay. All right. On high. So the first step is to identify the given. We know the day sales outstanding. Uh, and the days in inventory together equals 62 days. And what is this? This is the operating cycle, right? And we also get the days payable outstanding, which is 65 days. So it's very similar to what we saw here in question 4.1, except that we're getting the day sales outstanding and day sales inventory together in one number already. So don't let that confuse you. So um, all we do is the same the same uh, concept as before. This is already added, so we just subtract these two. And when you do that, you get negative three days. So essentially, for the interpret side, the company is able to pay its suppliers on average three days after it receives cash from its customers. Okay, So that's how we interpret the negative three days. Pretty simple. Uh, 4.5, operating cycle. NetSpeed Technologies is a telecom component manufacturer. The firm typically has a collection period of 44 days and day sales and inventory of 29 days. What is the operating cycle for NetSpeed? So, the first thing that we have to do as always is identify what's given. The day sales outstanding is 44 days, we get that from here. The days in inventory is 29 days, we're getting that from here. So all we have to do is just find the operating cycle. And to do that, all you do is just add those two. So don't overcomplicate your life. When you do 44 plus 29 days, operating cycle is 73 days. And when we confirm with the back of the book, that's the correct answer. So that's all you do for operating cycle is just add the day sales outstanding 
and the days in inventory, all right? 14.7, cost of trade credit. Cybex Corp sells its goods with terms of 2010 EOM net 30. And if you had, if you read through chapter 14, you'll understand these abbreviations, so make sure you do that. What is the implicit cost of the trade credit? All right, so identify the given. The discount for paying cash is 2%. Get that from here. The number of days to make payment for getting a discount is 10 days. The number of days of trade credit allowed is 30 days, net 30, right? So uh, what we need to do is just find the implicit cost of the trade credit. So let's do that. Find the implicit cost of the trade credit. So um, here I did the kind of like the um, word version of the formula. So the implicit cost of the trade credit is going to equals, right? And then we do per open parentheses, open parentheses, one plus the discount, which is going to be the 2%, divided by open parentheses, one minus the discount again to 2%, double close parentheses, um, the, you want to up this to the power, right? 365 days divided by open parentheses, 30 days, which we get from here, minus 10 days, which we get from there, double close parentheses, minus one, close parentheses again. All right, so that's the logic that we're going to follow in order to do it. So um, the answer comes up to be 44.59%. And if you notice, uh, we just, we all we did is this right here, right? Double open parentheses, one plus F7, which is here, the discount for paying cash, uh, over open parentheses, one minus the discount again, double close parentheses, and then we power this. Um, open parentheses 365 days in a year over open parentheses F9 which is the 30 days minus the 10 days double close parentheses minus one close parentheses and when you do that you I mean it, it may you may end up with 45 percent 44.6 44.59 is fine and if we check with the back of the book um, that's where we get 44.59 so just make sure to add the double um, the double decimal points, all right? And that's your answer. All right, next, 14.9, lockbox. Rosenthal Design has daily sales of 59,000. The financial management team determined that a lockbox would reduce the collection time by 1.6 days. Assuming the company can earn 5.2% interest per year, what are the savings from the lockbox? So chapter 14 covers what a lockbox is. Uh, the concept of lockbox, so I'm not going to go through that here. All right, so let's just start with the problem. Uh, identify the given, as always. The average daily sales, we get it from here, 59,000. The expected reduction in collection time is 1.6 days, a little over a day and a half. The annual rate of return on savings is 5.2%, right? It can be 5.20 or 5.2, 5.2 000, it doesn't matter. All right, so now there's two steps that we have to do. The first step is to find the increase in collection due to the lockbox. All we need to do is multiply the average daily sales by the expected reduction in the collection time. All right, so what does that mean? It means that in Excel, we just press equals, click 59,000 times 1.6 days. And we get $94,400. And that is the increase in collection due to the lockbox. Step two is to find the annual savings due to the lockbox. And that's going to that's gonna be the answer to the problem, right? Uh, so the first step, right, so, so the second step, find the annual savings due to the lockbox. So all we do is multiply the increase in collection due to the lockbox from above, right here, times the annual rate of return, which we have. And when you do that, you do equals 94,400 times the 5.2%. You get $4,908.80. And we confirm with the back of the book. That is our answer. All right. Next, 14.11, effective interest rate. The Kellogg Bank requires borrowers to keep an 8% um, compensating balance. Gorman Jewels borrows 340000 
at a 7% stated APR. What is the effective interest rate on the loan? Identify the given. The compensating balance required is 8%. Got it from here. The loan amount is 340000 And the annual interest rate on the loan is 7%. All right. So there's three steps here. The first step is to uh, identify the annual interest to be paid. And we do that by uh, multiplying the loan amount by the annual interest rate on the loan. All right. So in this case, equals 340,000 times the 7%, and that gives us the 23,800. The second step is to calculate the amount of the loan that can be used. So then all we do is we do the 340,000 again, so it equals, um, in this case, G10, 340,000 times open parentheses 1 minus G9, okay? So when you're doing your homework, I actually want you to do it this way. Allow the given to be the plugins for this. Don't just put, you know, don't type out equals 340,000 as the, in the formula. Really try to get yourself into the habit of clicking for the components of your formula. And that's important because if you make a mistake in a very large spreadsheet, it'll be much more difficult to find the mistake if you had typed all this out as opposed to trying to figure out where you went wrong in the formula, all right? So get into the habit of doing it this way. Equals, click here, 340,000 times, open parentheses, one minus 8%. And that gives you the amount of the loan that can be used, which is $312,800. So now that you have this, you can calculate the effective interest rate. And to calculate the effective interest rate, all you do is you take the annual interest to be paid, the $23,800, over the amount of the loan that can be used. And you get your rate, which is 7.61. And you confirm with the back of the book. And that is your answer. All right you might get 7.6 or 8% or 7.609. Try, try to get set it so that it's 7.61%, all right? 14.13, our final problem. Factoring. Malt's landscaping has an average collection period of 38 days for its accounts receivable. Currently, Maltz factors all of its receivables at a 2.04% discount. What is the effective annual interest rate on the financing from the factor? So as always, step one is going to be to identify the given. And here we have a tip. The terms of this factor indicate that for every dollar of receivables sold to the factor today, the firm receives 98 cents today and 38 and 38 days later, the factor receives the dollar in receivables. The cost of malts in percentage terms is 2.04% over a 38-day period. Additional information, not extremely useful. So let's go down to what's given. The bottom line is we have 365 days in a year, obvious. Um, the, we have 38 periods, up, which is given to us from the question. And then the M period, right? The, and this is verbiage from the text. So how do we get this number? We get this number by dividing the 365 days by 38. So essentially, there are 9.60526 38-day periods in a year. You get it? So let's you know that there's not 30 days in every month, right? February has 28 or 29 days in the month. Some months like January, March have 31 days, others only have 30. So if you imagine that, the, that just hypothetically speaking, there were 38 days in, this, in, a, in a month, there would only be 9.6 months, okay? So just think of it that way, it makes it much easier. Uh, so there are, there are 9.6 38-day blocks in the accounting for this company, all right? And the factor discount rate is 2.04, which is given to us already. So let's begin. Um, the first thing that we have to do is find the formula for effective annual rate. And effective annual rate equals, um, and then 
you're actually not if you're using um, Mac like how I'm using here you won't be using the brackets you'll be using parentheses um, if if uh, if the Microsoft um, you know, Windows version of Excel takes the brackets that's fine but I'm using Mac here so um, it'll it requires these parentheses so effective annual rate equals double parentheses one plus the factor discount rate which is given right close and then you up it the M to the M periods which we have close parentheses minus one that's it so there's nothing additional to calculate you have everything that you need so we if we do it we press equals double open parentheses one plus and then in this case it's E18 so it's a 2.04 close parentheses and then we up it to the 9.60526th power close parentheses minus 1 and that gives us 21.41% uh, if you get 21.42% um, or this 21.407 or 21 you know you want to take it further that's fine too um, but try to keep it down to 2 for the purposes of this particular problem, 21.41 is okay. And this concludes the video tutorial of Chapter 14, um, Questions and Problems from uh, the Co Fundamentals of Corporate Finance Text, 3rd edition by Perino, Kidwell, and Bates. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching.